Superman, set issue 12, which is Brian Michael Bendis and Ivan Reese. And I'll also say Supergirl 31, which is Mark and Draco, with Kevin Maguire and Eduardo Pansica on the art in that book. And we'll talk about these together because they're very much two sides of the same event. And yep. I will say it's a little bit weird how there's a couple of times in, in each book where they essentially have the same moment because they happen mm-hmm. in both books. But the dialogue's slightly different, and it was like, why is it doing that? Why not just match the dialogue? Yeah. That was odd. I was wondering if that's just a thing that they have to do because of, I don't know. They just use the same same stuff. Like, yeah. Yeah. It was odd. Um, but um, I like both books, though. I like both issues. Mm-hmm. And uh, I actually read Supergirl first. And the reason why I did that, because I was expecting one of them to say, hey, read the other one first, right? And neither of them did. Yeah. But I picked Supergirl to read first because the first page, look, it was picking up straight from the cliffhanger that both you know previous issues ended with. So mm-hmm. I was like, okay, I'll read Supergirl first then. So that looks like it's uh-huh. picking up right away. But Superman kind of does as well. It just has like a sort of flashback page before it gets to the, <laughs> to the main yeah, stuff. Yeah, no, I, I read Superman first. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah, so, but what I like is, is there's a lot of different stuff in each one, and obviously Supergirl's from Supergirl's perspective, and it's her fighting and talking about how the axe, she feels like like the axe is starting to be pulled more towards Rogozar, but we do yeah. get a really big, it's basically that moment from Force Awakens where Rogozar's like, you know, holding his hand out for the axe, you know, yeah. Force style, and it goes past him and goes to Supergirl instead. We essentially have yeah. that moment. Well, and, and the fact too that by the end, Joel calls it his staff, so it's like, oh, well, Zars changes into an axe you know mm. like so uh, to me it added a little bit more mystery of who he is and why just sir well, why exactly did the circle decide that krypton had to go you know um which i still i still think that that's not the full story i still feel like um Krypton was going to blow up anyways, and he facilitated it quicker. Oh, you know? yeah, no, I'm, I'm still expecting the Swerve to say that, no, they're not solely responsible yeah. for the destruction of Krypton. But, I mean, yeah. that, like, now, so I liked all that yeah. stuff with Supergirl's uh, issue. Both of them kind of had the moments where Supergirl's like, wait, is that John? What happened to yeah. you? Puberty kind of hit him like a ton of bricks. Yeah. yeah. Uh, he's like, ah, it was a whole thing. I was in the crime syndicate universe, and blah, 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 blah. Yeah. Um, I guess to the point where Superman has to kind of accept that John's going to go because John's actually with Supergirl at the end of this, so she, he's going to be in Supergirl yep. for the next few issues, uh, yep. where he goes off with Supergirl uh, to help fight uh, to get G- G- Gandello because they're going after Gandello yep. and the, the the Trillium Army. Is that is that, is that, is that her? Yep, uh, the Trillium Collective. Yeah, Collective, and so they're going after them at the end of the issue, and Crypto goes with them, and there's a couple of great panels here of them hugging there's a, they do the panel in both books but they're at different points of the moment so like one's like yeah. really kind of they're all happy the other ones that they're all kind of like more intensely hugging um that was really nice uh and superman has to kind of accept because he even says something like los is going to kill me for letting john go off on, on his own again but he's with Kara. He's, you know he's with yeah others uh but there's a really neat thing and because i read supergirl first where basically john uh, so not john uh clark and jor-el are about to get into it and Kara says, okay, I think that's just for them. We should get out of here, kiddo. And they're going to leave. So what's really nice about that is you don't get to hear the rest of the conversation in Supergirl. But then I read yeah. Superman, and that moment happens, and we actually do have the conversation with Superman and Jor-El. And it's, it's just it's a really neat reading experience, reading them two together, even though there's some overlap. And yeah. he basically, so there's a moment early on in Superman where Superman realizes Zod is there. And there's a couple of quick panels where it looks like they go really quick. And it's actually established earlier on the issue that Superman does this with Kara, where he explains why they're there in super speed to do it quickly. Yeah. So when I first read that, I was like, what the hell's going on? Because I read Superman first. And it stays on this. I'm like, oh, this has to be intentional. Like something's up. And then you find out later. Oh, was that in Superman? That... Was that in Supergirl, the super speed explanation? They did both. So okay. the at the end of the superman issue towards the end you see what him and zod no 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 about. i mean i mean was the one with supergirl and yeah. supergirl's book only yeah the one right. with supergirl was in supergirl right. so then when i read supergirl i saw it again i was like oh so this must just be a thing that clark's taken to do with with kryptonians yeah um so yeah so there's a moment uh, where he's fighting zod and it looks like going to super speed and it's just on its own there's no uh, explanation and it's not until later yeah. when he's talking to jor-el yeah. where he's like 
what happened when you went to super speed with, uh, with, with Zod? And he's like, oh, you noticed that. And then we get the flashback to the conversation. Mm -hmm. And kind of as expected, Zod's like, yeah, I'm not like... Like, I'm just working with Rogel's art to find out who else is responsible for Krypton's death. I'm going to murder yeah. the shit out of this guy as soon as I can. <laughs> oh, so heavy. This is what I don't like what DC's doing right now, and this is a stupid complaint. I don't like how they're taking villains that I like as villains and making them anti-heroes. Which I guess is cool for Shades of Grey and whatnot, but, like, I want to not like Zod, right? Like, oh, sure. Like, for wrestling terms, I want him to be a pure heel that when he shows up, I want to boo because he's the bad guy. Well, here's here's but, here's the thing with this though is I think this uh -huh. one works better than most of the other examples because I, I I do think DC are doing this too often with villains, uh -huh. but with Zod here it's like I don't think Zod's any nicer than he ever has been. It's just that the villain here is someone who hates Kryptonians, and all of a sudden that puts right. him and Superman on the same page. But but I like that though too. I yeah. like that there's someone that's even worse. It's, it's murky. It gives you this that's, murky like yeah. uneasy alliance feeling. Because in Venditti's, in, in Hell and Pals, we saw completely villainous Zod, right? That he's he's enslaving people to mine Sunstone. And you're like, oh, man, he's terrible. Good, keep him the bad guy. And so, but here, it's just like, no, man. Hey, Cal, I still don't really like you or your dad. But Zod is an even bigger thing that we need to come together. Yeah, because yeah. Superman says something like, you know, I'm surprised you've not destroyed him yet. And not so much that Superman yeah. wants him to be destroyed, quote unquote, but yeah. he's just like, why haven't you done this yet? He's like, because mm -hmm. I'm not strong enough to do it on my own. I, I, I kind of need your help. <laughs> like, he's, he's mm -hmm. really tough. Um, And it's like, okay, I guess we're kind of in an uneasy alliance then at this point. So yeah. uh, it's really interesting. Um, And... You know, he, he, Superman points out after because he does this thing where he, he calls uh, Jor El Mr. Oz again. He's like, you know, Mr. Yeah. Oz, Dad, whatever you know, you're claiming to be these days. Whatever you call. You know, Zod's my mortal enemy, but he's actually been more open and honest right now. You know, it feels like he's being honest, whereas yeah. you feel like you're always hiding things. Uh, and also, and Jor El rightfully points out, yeah, you're always going to hate me for the years you lost with John. Like, you missed like you know five, six years of his life yeah. because I took him away. I. I also, my favorite line probably in both issues, because they used it both times, is Clark to uh, Jor-El, why is everybody always trying to kill you? <laughs> like, what are you doing? And he, he does the whole, you know, we'll know soon enough. Um, but yeah, it's but yeah, they're both solid issues. Uh, I'm loving what's going on. Uh, like, yeah, how both. they both, they, they came in and they touched and now they're back going out again. Yeah, and, you know, and like, they're still connected in terms of the overall goal still mm -hmm. connected. But yeah, it's like, no, okay, yeah. well, you have to go do this Supergirl. Um, yeah. And she's taking John and Crypto, so they're together. But because of that great panel, and I think it was Supergirl, where all four Kryptonians, uh, including Crypto, uh, not Jor-El. Yeah. Um, no. The Earth uh, Kryptonians. Yeah, they all have their heat vision at the same time. So they all have the red eyes, uh, including yeah. Crypto, and it's a really good panel. Um, really good stuff. No, this this for me this was this was this was great. Um, like, I just like, it feels big, it feels cosmic, it feels like there's some sort of unified plan for the super books, like them being together. Um, it's interesting to me that Superman's tying in heavily to Supergirl, but action is tying in more to Leviathan, and then mm -hmm. eventually seemingly Naomi. You know, yeah. that's neat. That's really neat. I it's, dig it's it. It's the grand. It's the grand Bendis unifying theory. I feel like he's. He spun it off like there's a there was the Superman central spoke, and now he's spun it off to different you know and we got Naomi and we got Leviathan and Supergirl and Young Justice and so yeah it's... yeah uh, and Superman ends with them going to Krypton where there's just you know yeah. debris is that we're going to answer your question and it actually says next time the real actual truth about Krypton we'll see yeah <laughs> so I'm feeling because we find out that Jarrell had something to do with the circle. Um, yeah, he was on it, so, apparently, at one point. And so I'm feeling like he reached out to them to try to help save Krypton, right? That Because they, they also accuse him of, like, well, you knew Krypton was going to be destroyed no matter what. That's why you just sent me. Um, Clark tells him that. And Jarrell kind of gives him that, well, it's deeper than you even know. It's not just that. So yeah. this is what I'm hoping it turns out to be, is, like, Big he stuff. reached out to the Circle... Be like, hey, the the planet's doomed. There's nothing we can do. Can you? What can we do to to stave that off? And then maybe they turn on him, or you know, Man. they they use that as the entry point to get to Krypton to take it out or whatever. 
so yeah that last page of supergirls because it's just them sort of showing up at gandela's mm -hmm. place but like supergirl yeah. superboy and crypto, crypto it's just a gorgeous page the art in both of these oh books is fantastic God. and knowing that john's gonna have something to do with the legion and knowing that like, there's a clue in there right uh with zinder and just uh, mm -hmm. it's hitting a lot of these beats now that yeah the <laughs> But I think both books look fantastic. Obviously, Ivan Reese was doing fantastic work in Superman. Mm -hmm. I will admit my typical, my standard complaint, which I know everyone's expecting here, is the the vertical two page spread. No, yeah. <laughs> stop that no. shit. Stop it. That's like that's like filming something on your phone. Exists. Yes, that's exactly what it is. Way. It's like filming something on your phone. It's treacherous. It's you're a heathen. Yeah. <laughs> Don't yeah. do it. Yeah. <laughs> Just deal with that's it. All. Yeah, uh, now nah, super books are a really good place. I uh, love both Superman and Supergirl. Um, what are you rating each book? Uh, both of them are an 8.5. Me and Matt are in sync because I think I'm going to give it oh, 8.5 to both as well. <laughs> both really good. If I was picking which one was better out of them, it's really hard. Just pick one. I'm, I, I'm going to go more towards Superman just because it hit some of the stuff like with the Zod that I find more interesting. It doesn't mean I didn't like Supergirl, because I still like the Zar stuff. But I, I'm more piqued by by Zod mm. being like, no, they, man, we gotta they, work together for this. They, they Let me both, go back to eighty each other. They both had their own qualities and their own moments, even though yeah. they shared some stuff. And I, I think what I like is that it, they even necessarily have the qualities you thought you'd expect. Like there was more Zod and Superman. There was actually more Rogel Zar and Supergirl, and. Yeah. You know, it, it didn't feel like oh, Rogozar is mainly just Superman's villain, so Supergirl doesn't get to fight him. No, no, no. Like He's, this, like yeah. Supergirl and Zara were going down in this issue. Like they were fighting. And she goes, yeah, she goes. Like it's. I know you don't watch Game of Thrones, but it was a very much an Arya moment when she goes after him, and you're like, what are you doing? Like she's like, no, I can handle it, and, and I like that vibe. Hmm. 